Ceramic coating a vehicle with matte paint. I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. And this is DIY Detail. Yes, we have this beautiful matte Mercedes. And if you look here, but wait till the end of this video, there's a card here. You'll be able to see how we washed it and prepped it up to this point. And it's a great tutorial on how to wash your matte vehicle. But now we're gonna be ceramic coating this matte paint. Now we're doing a specific video for matte paint because if you get a nasty water spot that water spot remover won't remove, if something happens on your paint, like a scratch that you need to polish, well guess what, with matte paint, once you polish it, it turns shiny. So you cannot polish matte paint. Right. So we know that people are curious how to wash the thing, how to coat it, and that's why we're doing this specifically for matte paint. Right. But as we coat, same principles apply. Same principles apply, we just, just have to be a little bit faster in our leveling. Exactly. Now, one misconception in the industry, matte paint is different than regular paint. Actually, it's exactly the same. It is the same clear coat that you have on your shiny car, but they add one little thing, and that's a matting agent, and that gives you this look. But 30 seconds with a polisher, this is shiny. So it is the same paint, and it's the same clear coat that you're dealing with on a shiny car. It just has one little infinitely thin layer of matte on the surface. So if I have a matte paint car, the only time I'm gonna bring the polisher out is to polish the windows. Right. The, polish windows, the windows, the glass, what yeah. have you. Well, this one, you know, the mirrors are polished. That's so true. There's little things, but you never, ever want to touch a polish, or a polisher for that matter, to matte paint. And we also get the question, what DIY products are safe on matte paint? Actually, every single one of them, except for the gold standard polishing system. So polishing pads and polishes, no go. Everything else, have fun. So we're gonna coat. What exactly. have we got? We got panel prep in our hands, just like if you had washed, clayed, polished, any other vehicle, you're going to lay down panel prep before you coat. We want this completely free and clear of any waxes or grease or leftover rinseless water. Exactly. Anything that's on the paint, we want to remove it. Right, and then we're going to be applying our eight-year ceramic coating. Why the eight-year? Well, our five-year actually has more gloss enhancers in it than our eight-year. So we don't want gloss enhancers on this paint. No, we don't. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna start panel prepping while you yep. explain that though. And so, it's like, if I have a car, which one do I want? Like, I would like the coating with the most durability. Exactly, and the eight year gives us that most durability and the most scratch resistance. It's not scratch proof, don't worry. No coating ever has been, no coating ever will be. But, or maybe someday in the future there might be one that does it. But it is scratch resistant, meaning the little love marks from wiping with a dry microfiber towel or something like that, it's gonna resist that. So off we go, Nick's doing a good job there. I'll jump in and we'll be back when we're coating. And I'll, I'll just add to that is I'm never spraying panel prep on paint, especially not matte paint. I'm putting it on my towel and I'm buffing it till the flash goes away. Right. And you can see with our panel prep, it's visible on the paint and then you just buff with the dry side and it goes away. Now this vehicle has quite a few miles on it. It's not new. There's a few stone chips in the front, etc. Can ahead. you ceramic coat over a stone chip, Ivan? Yes, definitely. Actually, you should. You want a ceramic coat over the stone chip because now you're protecting the base material underneath it. Now we've washed this with rinseless wash. We've used iron remover on it. We've used our synthetic decontamination towel so the paint is pristine. But this one little step of panel prep is just extra insurance to make sure everything is perfect. And also, it gives us the ability to give a final inspection, make sure everything is good, there's no contamination left, there's no little pieces of tar or things like that. And any drips of water that are gonna come out of emblems well, we're gonna get them. Ivan, you taught me a while ago to always fold my towels after I wash them. Yes. And one great reason was so that you can inspect the towels for debris. Exactly. That you may end up using these towels on paint later. Right. And they could scratch the paint. Same thing for why we take the time to panel prep thoroughly before coating is you're inspecting for any missed spots, 
yep. something that we didn't get to with our clay towel, uh, a water drip, that sort of thing. Right, and also if you've polished the paint, it's just gonna remove any little excess polish that you may have left on the surface. In this case, no, we did not polish this paint. Well, Nick, satisfied? Looks amazing. It's gonna look even better in a couple minutes. What the ceramic coating will do, first of all, it's gonna make it a lot easier to clean. Now, it is gonna increase the sheen just a little bit. Not a lot, not enough to make a difference, but enough that it'll look richer, actually. And the color might look just a tad darker. While Ivan goes ahead and gets ready to coat the vehicle, I'm gonna actually use panel prep on the wheels. So we are gonna coat the wheels as well, coating these rim faces, a uh, good chance to do a final quality control check on the wheels using panel prep as well. Ivan, we have the gold standard polish. Right. And we have the standard edgeless towel. Right, now this is a low nap on one side, high nap on the other, and Nick is gonna be using both sides simultaneously. That's so right. the low nap to level the coating, and then the fluffy side to buff it up. Yeah, low nap here, fluffy side there. It's a nice kind of All duality purpose. to have when you're doing the ceramic coating uh, leveling. Right, now, I'm gonna put a little on my applicator pad. People are gonna ask how many drops, I have Round 10 to start, and then I'm going in a circular motion because I don't want any high spots. Now, normally on glossy paint, we're gonna wait five minutes. But on this paint, Nick is gonna level after about one minute. Because of that matting agent in the paint, it reacts differently to the coating. And what have you got in your left hand there, Ivan? I have our beautiful foam coating and sealant applicator. Just glides effortlessly over the paint. It's really easy to hold on to because it has the strap, so it's not going anywhere. I'm just gonna err on the side of wiping it sooner rather than later. Right. I don't wanna deal with any high spots no. on matte paint. I don't wanna deal with something that, ooh, what do I do? It's on there, right? Right. These are pro level coatings, they're easy but they're still professional ever coating, so just matte paint, man. You can't take it back once it happens. No. Now, you've done a panel, you go back, you see a high spot, reapply coating over that high spot and wipe it off. And don't wait, just do it immediately. In fact, the leveling is really easy. Yeah, it is. With the matte, is it the matte paint? Well, it's the coating and the matte paint. Now, like I say, on glossy paint, we say to wait five minutes. We're cutting it short here because we really don't want to have any high spots. We're playing it safe. But basically, as soon as the coating is touching the paint, it's already cross-linking, it's already in there. So Nick is not actually removing any coating. His towels are not getting wet. And because of that matting agent, the coating is digging in a lot better, actually, than on traditional paint. And you're gonna be wowed at how slick this feels oh. very quickly after application, although it's gonna take a little while but to fully just cure. Just here, my glove glides effortlessly, and here, oh my gosh, yeah. is there a way to, okay, seriously. Totally different. Yeah. It wants to stick. Right. Wow, okay, totally different. So if you have a matte car, you know what it feels like. Now it feels like a ceramic coated glossy car. Silky, smooth. And we're going panel by panel, we're taking our time, we're not in a rush. We're not being paid by the hour, so we can take our time. But the other thing is, we want to make sure it's done right. And I've got a glossy spot here that I may have had a little too much coating when I started on my applicator, so I'm going to pre-level it with this so Nick doesn't have to deal with it. Thanks, Ivan. Looks like it's been about a minute. Yeah, and we can see it's almost 
evaporated or dried completely. Now one thing when you are applying a coating, whether it be on matte paint or any other paint, you always want to overlap onto the next panel. That way you're sure you've gotten rid of those high spots. And White around, is so easy. And around badging like this, you want to use that high nap towel and go up and down, left and right, in every direction, just to make sure you've leveled all that coating. How's it looking? Beautiful. We'll do the windshield frame here. I'm just gonna check my angles here. Again, high spots can be taken care of. More coating on your red applicator, dab it on the surface if it's been an hour or so, and then level it again. But as I go, I'm just gonna check my light, check my angles, make sure I don't see any of those little high spots. It just looks like they're still coating on the paint. Better to catch them early rather than miss them for two days and eh, maybe be in trouble. Right. Just because again, this is seriously professional grade stuff. Now, when you're doing this as a team, it's always good to announce, if you're the one applying, what you've done. So I've done the mirror and the windshield frame. The person following you is actually the most important person in the team. Applying is the easy part. Looking at it, making sure you've got it leveled perfectly, that's the part that takes experience. We both have experience, so it's a toss up who gets to do it. I like leveling a little bit more. That's just my, it's my style, I have it. Yeah, a little spot here. Okay. Corner got missed, yeah, there we go. That would have been a nasty high spot. Right. And then the mirror. Then we'll move on to the door. Yeah, I love the short nap and then the high nap. It's a, it makes a great team. Exactly. Have we done the window yet? Or are we waiting no. on that? Okay. Keep the windows till the end. That's what I usually do. Here we go. And you've said it before about coatings is like, just choose a way. It's almost like washing a car. Choose a way to do it and do it the same time every time. Yep. That way you don't have to think about it. It becomes second nature and you have less possibilities of making errors. I always start for whatever reason on this top uh, left corner of the driver door and I work my way around and end on the hood. I don't even know why, but it's just, uh, it's my tradition. So there we go, door's done. So let me get this little molding here. Ooh, and I have a little bit of a excess there that I'll take care of with the applicator pad. So again, Nick doesn't have to worry about it. Check my watch, we're gonna give it yeah, another 20 seconds or so. And you can really see the effect on matte paint of it flashing or cross-linking into the paint. So, makes life easier. I was applying the ceramic coating to the wheels. He's already done this one. So I'm gonna do tire shine. I've got a couple sprays of tire shine on the brush. Now, a couple things about this. I'm applying it just to the tire. And I've got great control because our brush gives us that. So uh, I'm not getting any on the wheel. I'm just gonna add the nice little pop. It's gonna make this job really stand out. Now one thing, we get a question about once in a while. That is, do I need a specific wheel coating? Actually, you don't. Our coating is going on clear coat. What's on the paint of the car is clear coat as well. Your wheels are clear coated. It's the same material. And some people think, well, yeah, but the wheel gets so much hotter. If your wheel is getting hot enough to damage the coating, your tire is long gone. The coating can withstand a lot more heat than your tire can. You can see we've actually turned off our top lights. We're trying to change the lighting in here to get a sense of any potential high spots we miss. We were taking this very seriously with this very expensive car. Matte paint will not give us a second chance. No. Now, I did find a high spot just on the back corner of the trunk and we were able to get rid of it. Simply, if you do have a high spot, you're within an hour's time, take your applicator, rub it a little bit and immediately wipe it off with a towel and you will get rid of the high spot. Whoa, I haven't touched this with the towel yet. It is so slick. That is amazing. <laughs> I'm not used to matte paint being like sliding. Well, you applied and I buffed, so yeah. I leveled, so I felt it. Yeah, and this is looking good. I don't see any high spots. Typical areas where you're gonna get high spots, anywhere there's a panel intersection, because we're always overlapping. And 
you can have areas here. You can get high spots around emblems. Those are big ones. And also, you might have a little bit of water hiding behind there. When you're wiping it away, when you're doing that leveling, that drop of water comes out and it creates what looks like a high spot. So we are safe there. Nick took the time to blow dry this car everywhere with a master blaster just to make sure we got all the water out of the emblems. That worked great. Another area that you can have high spots is these little creases in here where we're getting in there with the applicator. We just want to make sure and a crease like that, that's a great spot for a high spot to hide. Around, this one doesn't have any B pillars, but if you had a B pillar here, this little angle where the B pillar comes down and comes out on the molding, that's another really popular spot for a high spot. Obviously, around and under door handles, around and under the rear view mirrors, and like the one we found, around spoilers and things like this. And again, this is an intersection where we have the light, the trunk, the side panel, the spoiler. So all that combined to give us a perfect area to get a high spot. But luckily, we got rid of the high spot, so we're safe. And this vehicle looks absolutely amazing. Let us know what you think about the vehicle and let us know if you're interested because we think you will be by clicking right here for more videos about how to apply our ceramic coating.